Hey everyone. If you're setting up a CNC with an auto tool changer, it seems to be a common problem to work out the dust collection. So I'm just going to cover what I ran into and uh, how I solved it uh, in case it'll help somebody else. This is a secondhand machine that came with a basic dust boot. Before I even set it up, I found a deal on uh, one, this one guy in the shop. Makes a really nice product for an adjustable setup. And I had it mounted on here, but I wanted it mounted because of where my dust collection comes from. I had it mounted turn 90 degrees, which uh, works out normally. I had a clearance a little section here. I'll, I'll show that closer in just a second, but I had a clearance. But once I got it over here, I found that it wouldn't clear my tool changers. And so I tried to swap back to the acrylic boot that came with it and found that this didn't have clearance inside either. So uh, after looking around for some other options, I decided to just make my own version of this and uh, based on measurements, making sure I had what I needed. And I think uh, you may not have the same orientation for tools or anything, um, but it should be the same kind of solution if you want to make your own. I'm going to start with what it took to mount this boot, turn 90 degrees or almost 90. Because of the tramming plate that I have, they're both sticking out, I clearanced right there. And this is as high as it would go, which was going to be just enough to work with the typical bit with the brush length, but it took away some of the adjustability as far as being able to go up higher. And I actually had to redo my tramming plate setup. It was originally higher up and this wouldn't go on at all. So I had to lower down the tramming plate on the Z-axis and then uh, re-square everything, which I had just finished doing, of course. Once I got my tool holder positioning figured out, and you can see I made a, ended up with a two-piece mount. I've got this one bolted solid, and this is lagged into here about an inch, which is very strong, but if the machine, something goes wrong, I may make a mistake or something goes wrong. As it's coming over, there's a tool in a tool holder, maybe you, you hit the wrong number, this will snap and provides a fuse so that I don't damage the spindle. I'd rather replace this than to damage the spindle. As we start to position for the tool holder, I found that I didn't have enough clearance. And I can't quite get down to where it would go in. And there's no way for me to raise this higher on here. It's a little tight to see in here, but even if I drop the tramming plate down more to lower this flange below the Z structure, the shape of the pathway here hits the tramming plate itself. So regardless of whether I lower this, this is still going to hit it. So this can't go any higher relative to the spindle. So it's going to be a shame not to be able to use this. And it might work in the normal orientation if you had tool holders along the other axis. But you would have to go over the tool, down, and back up to get it. So you have to make sure that your slide direction is the right way, that you're coming out. And I haven't, didn't try to verify anything if there's clearance, but it looks like there might be. From there, I figured I was going to need to switch back to the acrylic version. But there isn't clearance to go down over the tool holders. What I really needed was a version of this with the proper clearances to work with how I had things positioned. After I drew up basically what I had here in AutoCAD, I printed it out, made a template that I could run down. And then from there, I made some notes about how much clearance I needed, how much width. I wanted to make it more compact if I could. Uh, I took the location of where the dust collection was before and I could, figured out that I could move it a little tighter just to save them some of the extra space. So basically, the more inches of brush that you have, if you're unnecessarily large, you're reducing the velocity of the air going in all around when you're splitting and all, whatever air, amount of air you're drawing. When you make it a larger perimeter, you're going to reduce the velocity everywhere. Oh, I made a note to add in this direction because I could see from the previous design, you know, the benefit of hindsight here, that the bristles were all chewed up here. And, and not for me since I bought this secondhand, but I think when there was a clearancing bit installed, you can see that when the vacuum pulls the bristles in, they were just getting chopped up. So to keep it away from the bit a, a little bit, I'm going to push it that way. And then I noted with my own particular mounts here where I needed to uh, start the radius. So I, I needed to be clear to this point right here. And then I could do whatever I wanted back here uh, outside of what I needed for the dust collection pickup itself. And I didn't like the magnet setup on here, the way that these uh, protrude into here. 
That, that's what caused the clearance issues in the first place. So I changed where the magnets are gonna go on mine, and I also flipped this one. Happened to have the tightening screw back here, which is a pain when I'm rotating it this way, so I flipped my design to be over here. So with all those notes in hand, I went back to CAD and made some changes and then came and printed it again and just verified that I was going to be clear. I could see that things were good. I didn't, I could have cut out here, but the dust collection moved over. And I did take one good idea off of here. They have a second row of bristles inside and they've only got it on the end where the vacuum is, where the vacuum's strongest. And that just helps support this, this row to be, from being pulled in, which I think compared to other uh, boots that I've used, I think is a good idea. And so I'm going to duplicate that, but I decided to put it all the way around because I'd also like to keep these from coming in towards the clearancing bit or just in general. This one was from being boxed this way, I think, for a long time. They really took a set, but they can end up being drawn inwards by the vacuum. And the other thing that's going to do is that you have a lot of airflow coming through the bristles themselves that you're losing. You'd, li you'd like it to come down by the work surface and, and up and in and pull the dust in. And so by adding a second row in here, you're making it a little more dense up here and should keep more of the air being drawn in down low. So I've got the same three inch on the new one and it's gonna be instead of, looks like inch and a half, I've got two inch uh, bristles on the inside to go all the way around. With all the design changes made, I cut this pieces out of plywood before I got to the, not that expensive piece of acrylic, but I only ordered one. So I wanted to make sure, it, even though I was confident in the layout, I wanted to make sure before I cut into that. As I drop down to the tool change height, I've got plenty of clearance. I've got it on right now, right near the bottom of the spindle. So if I needed longer brushes at some point for a 3D carve or something, it's going to be done uh, th through putting another spacer plate in. Tons of clearance inside as I bump in, like a tool change would be. And then back out to the lift position. And then with the normal tool pick up or drop off complete, we're gonna lift straight up and everything clears. With the concept proven out with that prototype, I went and cut the same pieces out of acrylic. And I have to finish up uh, installing magnets and the brushes. And I'm going to try to uh, sand a little bit and see if I can flame polish the edges. But it, it's really nice to be able to look down and, and see what's going on at the bit. So if I can increase clarity looking through these edges as you look down in there, any little bit will help. So at this point, the design is all proven out. Uh, everything's going to work. It's just a matter of installing the magnets and the brushes. So instead of rolling into the design here, to keep this video at a reasonable length, I'm going to split off uh, a second one so I can cover thoroughly how to lay out the design in case it helps somebody to do your own. If you got something out of the video, give it a like or leave a comment, a question, anything like that. And if you're interested in laying out your own for whatever setup you have, so that it, you know, it works with however you wanna plan things out, then look for the next video uh, that will possibly help you lay that out. So. Thanks for watching.